They better start acting right. Dana White here failed to mention that to the world. They brought me to the press conference late. They brought me. They're like saying I turned on fights all year long too. We can see if, it, if I'm even fighting. Never turned on a fight in my life. I mean, I don't want nobody, but they offered me Woodley. And then they're all backing the other guy. But is it fair to say you, you still want that trilogy with Connor? I already won, won twice, so I ain't worried about it. Nate Diaz was the star of the UFC 25th anniversary press conference. What's up, LA? How are you? Until Dana White played the Conor McGregor promo for UFC 229, causing Diaz to exit the building in a huff and tweet that his scrap with Dustin Poirier was off. We have one more thing we want to show you. If one of us goes to war, we all go to war. You know what happened. Open your eyes and we'll see what it means. This presser was a big deal. The UFC announced exciting matchups for the biggest cards through the end of the year. They flew in 16 of the best available names to face off with each other and answer questions from the media, and hopefully move the needle. There were some interesting moments, to be sure. But it was Nate Diaz who got the place buzzing when he walked on stage fashionably late. Dustin, come here for a minute. Oh. Diaz walks into the presser and suddenly the theater is charged with anticipation. Listen close. You can hear the cheers and appreciation. But pay attention to the subtle rumbling undertones coming from the audience. This is a moment of collective consciousness becoming aware of threat and chaos. As a whole, the crowd feels the tension in the room shoot up. The awareness, apprehension, and excitement of the moment is enough to snatch your breath. It's something like being in proximity of an apex predator in the wild. It's absolutely thrilling. This is Nate Diaz. Love him or not, there's no arguing whether he moves the needle. He is the damn needle. Nate, uh, we've been waiting your return for a very long time. Well, why did you choose this one with Dustin? When it comes time to ask Nate a question, this goofy bastard stands up. Funny, earlier he felt comfortable asking questions all cool guy aloof. Why, why did you choose to come back and take this fight with Dustin? We've been waiting for a very long time to see you back. It's, uh, it's time to go, so it's time to go. It's time to go, so it's time to go. Not the profoundest syllogism you'll ever hear, but this is Nate Diaz. He's not comfortable expressing himself with words in front of a theater of strangers, microphones, and cameras. Don't mistake Nate's reticence for a lack of passion or something to express. Each round in Nate's career has been a voluble expression of his deeply held philosophies, a dissertation of violence punctuated with slaps and strangles, written in crimson streaks and splatter patterns. Do you guys view your fight as like a, a semi-final that is going to get you to the Connor uh, fight next? Could be Connor could be. I, I, this is a championship fight right here. Listen to Nate's response. Uh, this is a championship fight right here. These are bloody haikus. Diaz conveys the most meaning in the fewest syllables. It would be a mistake to confuse his economy of language with a deficiency of thought. We're going to show up and deliver, I promise you that. This is going to be one of the most exciting fights you've ever seen. What Poirier says is perfectly reasonable, but no one's going to build a headline around it. Dana, how excited are you about uh, making Poirier Diaz? Uh, we made the fight. I mean, obviously, it's a great fight. Stylistically, it's an incredible fight. Um, good to have Nate back, and, and we're happy about it. I'm happy about it. I think the Diaz brothers frustrate Dana to no end. He just can't understand their mentality. Dana's tried to make Nate happy, but what Nate wants is to be treated like an individual by the UFC, not a commodity. Simply giving in to Nate's financial demands will never make him happy. I know you were just asked kind of this question, but basically is the action of this fight the thing that brought you back, or was it the money? Since my last fight, I've been in a lawsuit so I wasn't eligible to fight. I don't know why nobody told you guys that. Nate, you, you got this Dustin fight now, but is it fair to say you, you still want that trilogy with Connor? 
I already went one twice, so I worried about it. Nick Diaz had the entire audience, media, and the athletes on stage eating out of the palm of his hand. They hung on his every word. This felt like a coming out party for Nate. That is until... We have one more thing we want to show you. As soon as they rolled McGregor footage, Diaz is out of there. And then he drops this tweet. Nate Diaz isn't going to hang around a situation if he feels disrespected, and he certainly doesn't want to be seen as a sucker for staying on stage while the UFC promotes a much bigger event than the one he's involved with. No, I was getting sued for my last fight. Some, some guys tried to claim management on me, and then I wasn't able to fight. I wasn't eligible to fight until about a, a month ago. Oh, so, so so you weren't you weren't holding out for money. You just couldn't fight. No, no, no. And then, but 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 Dana White here failed to mention that to the world. But right. when Conor was had a lawsuit because of uh, Showtime and, May and Mayweather and all that shit, uh, Why did you come out he he was like Conor's not eligible to fight, so he can't even fight right now. He had his back like that. But then right. now they're like saying I turned down fights all year long too. We can see if, it, if I'm even fighting. I don't, I don't want nobody, but they offered me Whitley. Nate is stirring the pot. He's learned to promote himself. He can speak directly to the MMA community through his own social media or the tabloid media who hound him wherever he goes. Just because the UFC handed Diaz a stack of cash for his last appearance in the Octagon, it doesn't mean they bought Nate's loyalty. Listen as Nate makes a case for himself. They better start acting right. Dana White here failed to mention that to the world. They brought me the press conference late. They brought me. They're like saying I turned down fights all year long too. We can see if, it, if I'm even fighting. Never turned on a fight in my life. I mean, I don't want nobody, but they offered me Whitley. And then they're all backing the other guy. Everyone's against him. UFC, old managers, Dana White personally. There's always an explanation that leaves him free and clear from any and all culpability. Nate has a 19 and 11 record in MMA, but he's convinced himself he should be undefeated. While it would be maddening for an outsider to work with someone like this, it's also the thing that gives Nate the confidence to step forward into the teeth of superior striking. As Diaz attempts to leave the run and gun media in his wake, we get a very candid glimpse into what makes the man tick. They brought me the press conference late. They brought me. Fans want to see the trilogy you and Connor. Is that going to happen? I don't know, man. I'm done with that. Good talking to you, all right? Nate's ready to be gone, and he certainly doesn't want to think about McGregor anymore. But Diaz also doesn't want to be rude, so he thanks the guy for talking with him and touches him to create a point of contact, a moment of sincerity. It works for a second, but the guy shamelessly presses him again. Con Connor versus Pete was announced on October 6th. Who do you got in that one? I, fought, I whipped one's ass and I slapped the Gosh. fuck out of the other one, so they're both my little bitches. You That's who I got. Right in his face, he didn't do good. shit. So, 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 Scared for his life, him and all his Russian friends. He's supposed he to be winner, from dude. a third world country, and he got from Stockton. He got his ass slapped, flat, didn't do shit. All their eyes lit up, his whole team. The whole Russian, they're all Yeah. No more, nice to meet you, all right? Have a good one. We see the way Diaz views his world. He's built a narrative that makes him the boss over Khabib and Connor. Lord knows how much factual accuracy there is to any of this. But the important thing for Nate is that he's able to walk away holding his head up because he's the hero of every story he tells. That's why when the camera guy asks, you got the winner then? Nate can honestly respond, I am the winner. I am the winner. Well, that's what I see. Nate Diaz is able to control much of the larger narrative swirling around him because he's unwilling to sit by and allow somebody else's version of reality to hold sway over him. Sometimes that means walking out of a press conference, even if you're being the star. And other times it means slapping the crap out of Khabib in front of his stunned Russian friends. It took two scraps with McGregor for Nate to finally get out from under his brother's shadow and establish himself. This media event was his chance to get out from under the even longer shadow of Conor McGregor. Perhaps by refusing to sit respectfully as the UFC gave their golden boy more shine, Nate made the best case yet for seeing him as an individual who should be promoted as such, and not as a commodity to be paid for and used like any other body. And my press conference. Here's my press conference. Nate Diaz gets it. This was his press conference. Both of them. Thanks for watching and liking. What do you think? Should Diaz get the winner of Connor and Khabib? Or is he already the winner and whatever happens next is gravy? Let me know in the comments section below or uh, over on the Twitters.